video will show you how to operate an Agilent 1100 series HPLC high performance liquid chromatography system. The HPLC system consists of several modules, including a solvent pump with solvent cabinet, a vacuum degasser, an auto sampler, a column compartment, and two detector modules. The solvent pump used in our facility is a binary pump that allows two different solvents to be pumped in at once at variable proportions to achieve optimal mobile phase polarity. The vacuum degasser removes visible air bubbles from the pumping system so that they do not affect the samples. Samples are loaded using the auto sampler. Here we use 2 ml vials fitted in 54 well plates. The column compartment is where the column which contains the stationary phase is placed and where the sample is eluted from the column. The left hand end is connected to the auto sampler and the right hand end is connected to the detector. The temperature of both ends can be controlled and monitored. The detector generates signals from compounds as they elute it from the column. In our facility, there are two types of detectors available, a UV visible light detector, DAD, and a fluorescence detector, FLD. You may only choose one detector for your analysis at a time. In this video, we will use the DAD detector. Turn on all of the modules by pressing the bottom left buttons of each module. Only one detector should be turned on. And open the Open Lab Control Panel program on the computer, selecting Launch Mode. Check that there is enough mobile phase in the bottles. Please note that for degassing purposes, only water or organic solvents can be used for channels B and C. Right-click on the binary pump icon and set the solvent gradient to 50% A and 50% B for degassing and click OK. Right-click on the binary pump icon and select Switch On. Open the purge valve by turning it gently counterclockwise to get rid of any large bubbles in the system. If some bubbles persist, you can increase the flow up to 5 ml per minute with the purge valve open and gently tap the capillary to remove them. If the bubbles are expected to persist for a long time and not enter the subsequent modules, then it is alright for them to stay. When the purging is complete, gently close the purge valve and switch off the binary pump. The initial purge should be done once per day. Open the column compartment to ensure that an appropriate column has been installed. Detach the left column holder and allow the system to purge for a couple minutes in order to get rid of any bubbles and or leftover liquid from previous uses. Collect the liquid into a waste container. Reconnect the column holder. When closing the cover of the column compartment, Make sure all capillaries are fitted into the slots and are not pinched by the cover, otherwise the liquid may not flow properly. Go to the method menu and choose load method. Based on your experiment, you can use the loaded method or edit the method before starting your analysis. To edit the method, click on the edit entire method tab under the method menu. Select all of the options on the checklist and write down details about your method in the comments. Here we only wrote down lab demo for the demonstration purposes, but in actual experiment, you should write down as much detail as possible. Click OK. A window will pop up automatically on the top left of the screen. For the HIP sampler type, always select HIP AIS. Click OK. A binary pump setup window will show up next. Change the flow rate and the solvent gradient according to your experiment. You can also change the minimum pressure limit to 70 bar or based on your own needs in order to detect leak in the system. 
Next, a signal details window will pop up. You can change the signal settings according to your needs. Click OK to continue. Then, an Edit Integration Events window will appear. Do not change these settings. Click OK. Following the previous step, a Specify Report HPLC window will show up on the screen. Select the analysis that you want and click OK. This time, an Instrument Curves HPLC window will appear. Select all the instrument data curves you need for future analysis. Click OK. Finally, a runtime checklist will pop up. Data acquisition and standard data analysis are usually selected. Click OK. If you need to change the wavelength of the DAD detector, right-click on the DAD icon and select Method. If not, you can skip this step. After adjusting the method, Select Save Method As and save your method in the Method folder. Please note, always select Save Method As instead of Save Method so that you do not overwrite the original method. Click on the Instrument tab and choose System On. Wait until all green lights are on, as shown here. There are two sample loading trays that have a total of 108 wells. On each side of the tray, there are column numbering and markings as shown here. Make sure you install your trays this way. Load your samples into HPLC vials and place them into the wells of the loading trays. Note that the maximum capacity of HPLC vials is 2 ml. Therefore, it is best to add a volume between 0.5 and 1.5 ml to ensure efficient sampling. Click on Sequence, and then Sequence Table. Record the position of your samples here. Remember the plate closer to us is plate 1. Select Save Sequence Template as and store the sequence table in a designated folder so that next time you can easily reload your sequence template in the future if needed. Click on Run Control tab and then Run Sequence. The auto sampler will start injecting your samples. After you've completed your run, click on Instrument and then System Off to shut down the system. Thank you for watching.